Our next speaker is from Oxford. This is our Oxfordshire coordinator, and I was delighted to be in the Oxford rally against 15 minute cities. And we're the only party that has it in our manifesto that we are against 15 minute cities and we are against Agenda 2030. And David Roy Cox here has been on the forefront of fighting against these in Oxford. You know all about them, but David's going to share a lot more about what he's been doing and uh, how we're fighting that whole agenda. Please welcome David Roy Cox. <laughs> May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee, I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For if the world is against the truth, then I am against the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please, um, uh, allow me to introduce myself. I am David Roycox. I am the Heritage Party Coordinator for Oxfordshire. Thank you for the invitation, for it is a genuine pleasure to speak here this morning. I am happy to see friends, old and new. It is joyous also, or I am joyous rather, to see members afresh. I am optimistic as we grow, as our numbers grow, we grow in strength, we grow in number. I am grateful to be a member of the Heritage Party, a party that continues to stand for free speech, continues to stand up for free thought, continues to stand up for freedom of expression. A party that is socially conservative. A party whose members, whose members are patriots. A party that believes in the nation of Great Britain. I am going to talk today on the subject of low traffic neighbourhoods. Low traffic neighbourhoods. Traffic filters, 15 minute cities, mini Holland, smart cities and the, and the districtization of our cities and towns has been planned for some time. I say here today, malevolent forces in the world, there are malevolent forces in the world and they are in plain sight and they are also in disguise, hidden to us. Turn on, indeed, in plain sight, turn on any mainstream media, any TV station, any radio, open up your web browser, and this diatribe spews forth. The propaganda machine is a weapon, and it's being driven by the captured corporate legacy media. This is a psychological attack on the minds of the many as they lay down a culturally Marxist, uh, dystopian, authoritarian landscape. The, the, there is also a hidden hand of evil, for it lurks beneath the mega corporations, the military industrial complex and financial institutions. They are cloak and dagger, predators hiding be hiding in the labyrinth, the shady labyrinth. They, it is essentially a closed door political monopoly. I'll give an example to this. The World Economic Forum's henchman, Klaus Schwab, and his global leaders of tomorrow, and the young global leaders. 
This is not by chance. No, sir, no way, absolutely not. This is no conspiracy theory. This is a conspiracy fact. The globalists are determined. In fact, the globalists are hell-bent in their wicked attempts to create a one-world government. I call out today the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals under Agenda 2021. I call out today the World Economic Forum and Agenda 2030. These are not for the good of humanity. They are deceivers, they are wolves in sheep's clothing. They wish to control our lives, restrict our freedoms, remove our democracy, and enslave us into a prison cell that we call home. The World Economic Forum has spread its, satan its satanic tentacles deep into Westminster, corrupting many uni party MPs, frontbenchers and backbenchers alike, many of them with their heads, their, their snouts buried deep in the Davos feed trough. The truth is, the vast majority, the overwhelming majority, lack the spine or a back broad enough to fight and make a stand against this evil. So this is the problem we are facing. The problem is the uni party. It is the serpent. It is the snake that bites at the heels of sycophantic civil servants. And this venom, this snake bite venom, goes straight into the veins of our local councils at town, district and county level. We are seeing this toxicity, this invasive species, on our streets, in our cities and our towns. In Oxford today, we see the unfurling of the infrastructure and the clunky machine gears of tyranny bear down upon us. Oxford City Council and its cabinet are elected to represent the people of Oxford. They are absent. They are not present. They are not in the room. They are not doing a proper job and they are not fit for purpose. In the first instance, I give an example. The consultation process was not fit for purpose. The majority, over 90% of Oxford residents, simply do not want low traffic neighbourhoods. Secondly, Oxford's local government and their cabinets are ineffective. They are unrepresentative and they are undemocratic. What we are dealing with here is shambolic. 100% shambolic. We are dealing with a collection of milk toast, milk sop, loony left wokies facilitating the rise of communitarianism. We are, I believe, falling into a chasm, I say a chasm of political apathy against the backdrop of a disenfranchised, disconnected society. Look at this photo here today. My gosh, what a bloody nonsense. This is the truth and reality blocked off residential roads. This is what faces the people of Oxford. This is an anathema, being plonked at the end of our roads, sticking out like a throbbing red sore thumb. This is not, I say this is not, the Oxford I remember. The Oxford of my family. The Oxford of my friends. The Oxford that is my home, the Oxford 
I know. For Oxford is not the open city it once was. Fact, draconian restrictions on travel continue and the walls of the prison state are closing in and around Oxford's residents, inch by inch, day by day. This has gone way too far. A line must be drawn in the sand. This has to stop. Look here, let's be clear. A tiny minority, there are, there are a tiny minority of climate morons and the cyclist mafia uh, who are in favour of blocking the roads of these damned idiot planters. But they care not. They do not give an iota. Fact, access is, is severely restricted to residential areas, local shops, businesses and recreation. And if that wasn't bad enough, the, Oxford, uh, the people of Oxford rather are faced with the misery as emergency services simply cannot get access. They are forced to take a longer way round. Low traffic neighbourhoods, I say today, are harmful to local residents by design. <laughs> Look at the lunacy of this sign. Open to walkers, cyclists and wheelchair users. And of course, the bloody loathsome blight of electric scooters. But no cars, for cars are prohibited. However, the majority, the, the reality rather, the reality is that most people use their cars as the, being the most practical option for the majority. However, the majority is the most underrepresented and their voice is falling upon the intentionally deaf ears and the purposefully blind eyes of Oxford City Council and the members of its cabinet. <clears throat> Supporters of totalitarianism say cars are bad and not welcome in Oxford City and her suburbs. The sum of these commu communitarian words add up to this. The state will tell you. The state will dictate to you. The state will say to you how you are to travel. We, the Heritage Party, say no. We continue to defend our right to travel freely without fear, threat, or persecution. The big brother I. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are being invaded by a plague of the damned spying cameras in Oxford. And not just Oxford, indeed, wider Oxfordshire is no exception to this rollout. The use of such sophisticated systems by the state and the push by its political actors is particularly troubling. This is, this is, I say, this is an intrusion and severe overreach into our privacy. We hold the right to be left alone in our homes, on our streets and in our towns and not spied upon. Do the people of this fine nation want the Orwellian big brother eye snooping on them constantly, 365 days a year, 24-7? Of course not. Of course not. We, the Heritage Party, are the opposition to this dystopian future. Are we to be sniped and fined by AMPR cameras for daring to leave, to escape from, our, from the entrapment of our residential prison district? 
We, the Heritage Party, say no. Absolutely no. No way, never. For this is not communist China. This is the land of Great Britain, being second to none, the finest nation on God's earth. Okay, to finish. The Uni Party supports the rollout of this tyranny. Fact. We are at war. We are fighting against a common enemy with a common purpose that is common to us all. This is a call to action. We must fight back against, sorry, we must fight back against this tyrannical globalist agenda. Those who would gladly remove our liberties, our freedoms and our democracy. Good Christians, people of faith, it is time to put on the armour of God and get in the fight. We, together, today, we, the Heritage Party, stand opposed to the Uni Party. We, the Heritage Party, stand opposed to low traffic neighbourhoods. For this is the fight. This is the adventure of our lives. Blessed, blessed are we few who stand together. Thank you. Thank you, David Roy Cox. <laughs> Fantastic speech. Thank you so much, David.